Hello everyone. Our discussion in our today's session is all about silos, contracts, and ethics. And this is just a continuation of our previous discussions. Today, we will be talking about the suspension or termination of services. If circumstances arise for which the civil engineer is not responsible and which make it impractical or impossible for the civil engineer to perform in all or in part the services in accordance with their agreement, then the civil engineer shall promptly notify the client of the same. It, by reason of the above mentioned circumstances, certain services as being suspended, the time for their completion shall be extended by the extent of the delay plus a reasonable period for the resumption, or if the speed of performing certain services has to be reduced, the time for the completion shall be extended as is necessary by reason of the circumstances. The client may suspend all or part of the services or terminate the agreement by written notice of not less than 30 days to the civil engineer who shall immediately decide to stop the services and minimize further expenditure. The civil engineer by written notice of no less than 30 days may terminate the agreement or it or at its end or a discretion without prejudice to the right to terminate, suspend the performance of the whole or part of the services under the following conditions. And here are they. When 30 days after the due date of payment of any account, the civil engineer has not received payment of the part of it, which has not by that time been contested in writing, or when services have been suspended for a period exceeding six calendar months, or if it is clear to the civil engineer that it will be impossible or impractical to assume the suspended services before the period of suspension has exceeded six months. When the services are suspended or terminated, the civil engineer shall be entitled to payment for the services carried out, including consequential costs, expenses, and disruption fees incurred as a result of the suspension or termination, and remobilization fees on resumption. Suspension or termination of the agreement shall not prejudice or affect accrued rights or claims and liabilities of the parties. For the settlement of disputes, if a dispute arises on either party, then that party shall by notice in writing serve on the other party of the details of the dispute and request that the dispute be resolved by conciliation. If the matter in dispute is not resolved in conciliation between the parties within the prescribed time, then the matter in dispute shall be referred to arbitration. For the ownership of data, designs, and documents, the design analysis, drawings, specifications, and reproductions thereof are instruments of service owned by the professional engineer and shall be used only for the specific project covered by the agreement between the client and engineer. What are 10 the civil engineering services that we can offer to our dear clients? Civil engineer and civil engineering firms where they serve both public or private employers can provide a variety of important services which are described in Section 2. Typical services may include the following. Design consultations and advices, 
disability studies. We can also perform as civil engineers the field investigations and engineering data collection. Field investigations can be done when, for example, a building collapse and you have to do some investigations to determine the reason why it collapsed. And for the engineering data collection, we can do it by research. We can do it in traffic engineering in order to determine why is it always having a traffic in that particular area. Environmental assessment, impact statements or engineering reports. Opinions of probable construction costs. Preliminary and final designs, drawings, specifications, and construction bidding documents, just like what we're doing when we're providing a client the program of works, including the methodology and the type of material that we will use in that particular project. Assistance in securing construction bids and in awarding contracts. Construction administration and observation. Arrangement for or performance of testing of materials and equipment. That is why we are learning more about the material and testing. Assistance in startup, assessment of capacity and operations of facilities. Preparation of operation and maintenance manuals. Appraisals and rate studies. Value engineering. Expert testimony. Assessment of risk. Structural remediation or rehabilitation. In fact, we can also do demolition process and many more. Project management and controls. Provision, supplemental, temporary staff. All of these are some among the civil engineering services that we can provide our dear clients. And of course, we also have teaching. An engineer can perform teaching in the academy to serve students who are willing to be trained and receive skills in their education, especially in the field of civil engineering. Civil engineers may also serve as construction managers or program managers, as well as the project manager, and may employ other sub-consultants and subcontractors as part of their services. Many civil engineers and civil engineering firms specialize in specific areas of engineering, such as the structural and foundation, the technical and environmental, water resources, and of course, hydraulics. These also include the fluid mechanics, transportation, and project management and construction engineering. Professional civil engineer firms draw upon the combined talents of various disciplines, such as economists, planners, engineers, and designers. We include also the estimators, the architects, scientists, technical analysts, the specification writers, drafters, field representatives, surveyors, and others. The expertise of practitioners and specialists in other fields, particularly as the use of computers and computer-aided design, just like, for example, the AutoCAD and drafting increases is also utilized. Not, all, not only AutoCAD, but also Midas and STAD. Likewise, civil engineers are employed by these practitioners to assist them in the performance of their respective services. The civil engineer provides services which may result which may result in the clients committing financial resources for construction of a proposed project. <clears throat> 
the suitability of the constructed project for the intended function must often be accepted at face value by the client who may be unfamiliar with the technical and civil engineering aspects of the project. Thus, civil engineering services must be performed in a competent and efficient manner on a highly professional and ethical plane and in an atmosphere of mutual respect and trust. Project implementation has become increasingly complex, involving financial, environmental, regulatory, technical, and managerial matters. As a result, clients have opted to pursue a number of implementation approaches. One such approach in commonly called program management, the client retains a program manager or a general manager to perform a specialist tasks necessary to the development or construction of a specific project. Alternatively, the client may retain a program manager to develop, define, and oversee the program. Also, to prepare budgetary estimates of program costs, prepare, evaluate, and select members of the program team, and provide periodic program status reports. In other cases, the program manager staff would in essence act as an extension of and interact with the client staff through the life of the program. In most cases, the client continues to be the contracting or contracting agent with all members of the program team and the contractors are to construct the project. The project manager or the program manager is generally a civil engineer. Now let us have the following, the specialization in civil engineering. Within the practice of civil engineering, the PICE or Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers recognizes the six areas of specialization. Actually, this is happening at present. A civil engineer who has demonstrated his knowledge, experience, education, and training in accordance with the requirements of the concerned specialty committee of the PICE is awarded a certificate of specialization by PICE or PIC. Those awarded with the certificates are considered qualified for positions in their respective areas of specialization. And these are actually what PISER recognizes for. The PISER recognizes specializations in the fields of the following. At first, we have the structural engineering. That's why we have the structural engineers. This is actually a separate specialization. Upon graduation and passing the licensing examination, you may also choose to become a geotechnical engineer by specialization. Another specialization, you can become a water resources and hydraulic engineer, transportation engineer in the field of transportation engineering, construction management and engineering. Perhaps you can be a project manager or a general manager of a construction firm or in a certain project. Environmental engineering, or at the say, environmentalist. A civil engineer who was specialized in any art of civil engineering may be considered as a specialist in the appropriate field that's enumerated. And in fact, we have the seventh one. We have in the field of the academy. Thank you very much and God bless us all.